Welcome back to the Thunder Rooster Podcast. My name is Ron. And I'm Paul. Uh, Paul, how's your day going, man? Pretty good. Yeah? Can't say everything's been pretty decent. It's been freaking hot lately. I am waiting for a little bit of cool down, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's hot as balls. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I think we've been pretty uh, pretty all right in the uh, northeastern Ohio area, especially with the heat dome that's going on on the west. That sucked. All those fires I, and shit. I, yeah. Record temperatures, yep. 100, like 120 degrees. We've been screwed with fun. all that rain, though. Yeah. I don't really feel like there's been much of a summer. Yeah, I don't know. The when we have a lot of rain like that during the summertime, mm-hmm. it just makes me miss fall and like ready for it. I don't know. It's cloudy it'll, days. It'll be like, here before you know it. It's like That's I want to sure. decorate Halloween stuff, and that'll be coming before you know it too. Start watching them uh, Halloween. Hell, stuff. we're already like six months right before, like close to Christmas. About six months. Getting there? Yeah. Half the year? Yeah. No? Something like that. It's well, once less, we get to July. Less, I'm sorry, yeah. the 25th. Yeah. It's less than that. It actually is the 25th of June. Of June. Uh, will be six the months six months. So we're already close to Christmas. I did say, see something this morning. It was like 70 days or, uh, yeah, 71 days until fall. I'm like, Dusting really? that elf copy off. Already? <laughs> already. Yeah, I actually almost watched a Christmas movie the other night. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no shame in that, man. I've got a problem. You could have your tree up all year round if you really wanted to. I would totally do it, too. I even tried to discuss with my wife, be like, hey, we can leave it up and we can just, you know, decorate it according to the holidays. I was cool with that. You know, I got the kibosh. The wife said, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. But we did we did leave it up longer than usual. So I will give her that. I'm like, that's fair assumption. Yeah, that was, that was the I was same like, case we, with my do wife. Do we have to take it down? Right. Yeah. All right. On a serious note, that was the fun part. Now we're getting serious, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> Today's going to be interesting. Today yeah. is a conspiracy episode, and it's kind of a weird one. I don't like this one at <laughs> all. <laughs> I will be up front with saying this is a debunked conspiracy right off the bat. Right. But we're going to throw a little question mark on it because there's certain aspects of it that even though it's debunked as what it is, there's still powers at play that could They could do this stuff at any point in time. And now what we're talking about is the FEMA camps, the FEMA concentration camp type uh, conspiracy today. It's a doozy. Like I said, it's been debunked. So, you know, we're not trying to start anything crazy, but there's also some stuff we'll talk about at the end that's scary. (laughs) Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. But for, for our listeners and viewers who are not aware of what FEMA stands for, well, at least just give them that. Yeah, of course. Federal Emergency Management Agency. Yep. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yes. Interesting thing is they take in about, uh, that they report about $28.5 billion a year. Right. Wow. That's now, a lot of money. Why? <laughs> now, don't get us wrong. We're not going to be hating on FEMA. All no, all no, no, today, no. But FEMA has done some good. But they've also That's not done what they're supposed to no. a lot, too. No. Um, you know, Katrina is one of those things where, you know, they weren't quite as responsive as they needed to be. Or what was it? There were, I think it was actually Hurricane Andrew also. Yep. That they slipped up hard on. Mm-hmm. Hard on. <laughs> <laughs> they slipped. <laughs> <laughs> but where we go with this, obviously... The whole idea behind FEMA being created Mm -hmm. was to basically be a checks and balance for the situation if we have any type of natural disaster, like we just said, and to combat that, to offer help and aid. But then we go down the slope and there's there's things that are just very hard to kind of actually wrap your head around and, and say, wow, this could be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. There's certain powers given to FEMA over the years that makes you kind of scratch your head and make you wonder, like, why do they have these powers? But, I mean, the whole thing with FEMA, like Paul was saying, I'll just kind of reinstate the fact that, you know, it's obviously a well and good start to it. Um, Pretty sure it still does more good than bad today, uh, as far as I know. But, you know, it's just one of those insurance things for the country when any kind of natural disaster or say like when 9-11 happened, they were there as well, Mm -hmm. you know. So you've got agencies 
across the U.S. So it's not just like in one isolated, you know, city or right. whatever. Maybe it's it's federal. Yeah. But there's also powers and a lot of money goes into that, which is essentially just feeding a bigger government, you know, which is not. It's not what we want. It's not good. <laughs> government is inefficient and should be dissolved. Please hold while I transfer you. It's <laughs> not what the plan was for smaller government, but. Right. So the conspiracy for the FEMA camps, um, I got into around maybe 2010, I want to say. On the FEMA camps? Yeah, it's when I okay. first heard of them. And this is when I first got into like the rabbit hole of conspiracies. You know, I did, I'd heard about 9-11 and all that stuff prior to that. But, you know, the zeitgeist movies would kind of led me down the hole. Same here. <laughs> So a couple of years after that, you know, I lived in Vegas for a long time. And I had a lot of downtime on my hands and I drank a lot. <laughs> so As one should. Right? <laughs> You're in Vegas. So, uh, you know, I got on YouTube and was looking up like all kinds of crazy conspiracy stuff. Because for me, my love for conspiracy theories, it's really anytime I have writer's block when I'm writing music, I will always go and look up paranormal stuff. Or conspiracy theories. I didn't know that. Because it gets the gears turning for me. Really? It, it lights up my creativeness somehow. So that's why I've always huh. been conspiracy or no paranormal. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. So, you truly learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's my superpower. <laughs> <laughs> but So I, I spent a lot of time diving in on this stuff. And I was freaked the hell out. Like, I was ready to try and get all kinds of, like, supplies together just in case any of this stuff ever happened. Yeah, if the end of the world was coming, sure. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. The whole run up to 2012. I didn't necessarily buy into that, but I was like, if anything was big was going to happen, they have a good reason now. You know? <laughs> oh, we were listening to the Mayan calendar. It's going to expire. I mean, that, that at that point, I was like, oh, maybe there is some uh, context to what's going on. But then, sure enough. Nothing happened. All these people buying up underground bunkers and stuff right around that time. Yeah. They even had a whole like group. Uh, I remember when I was in California, they had signs and stuff for like a 2012. It wasn't a religion, but it was some kind of cult <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but they were basically trying to get a, a group of people to go in on bunkers and stuff to be together and stuff through the 2012 thing. Anyways, off topic. But anyway, I was I was I was really frightened by it because there's a lot of stuff in there that um you know essentially they're trying to say that they're going to round up people in America and put them in essentially concentration camps or death camps, you know. Um you know a lot of times we can think of the atrocities of what's happened in the past, of course, with like you know, Nazi Germany and their mm -hmm. concentration camps. Right. And we can say all day, we'll never do that. It'll never happen. Well, it will happen again. It's going to take something severe to happen, but it's just a cycle that we have in times of war. You know, right. we've had concentration camps in this country. Of course, we have... The Japan incident, or right. the Japanese descendants. Right, right around World War II. And yeah. it was, if, you know, people were like, well, if it wasn't possible, that's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. They did house and torture and put in slave camp and whatever else they need to be. Did they torture? I'm I just thought they just threw them in a holding cell. It's, well, like a camp, but like I didn't think there was any kind of like bad stuff going on. That's just, that's I could just be my, wrong. No, no, that's just my intuition. There's oh, probably speculation on it? Yeah. Gotcha. When it comes to this kind of stuff, I just think they're all, it's just they're all out to get us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if it was done once, what's to say it wouldn't happen again? Right. That's essentially what I'm saying. I was just trying to give some like back mm -hmm. history, like you know, even though I'm white, you know, I have Cherokee descendants from me, so... And I have Jewish descendants, so I'm fully aware of what the Holocaust was. Italian so. as well. Pizza bagels. Case. You didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza bagel. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, when they did the Trail of Tears back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, in the early development companies, they rounded up all the Cherokees and some of the Seminole Nation and... They just sent them back into Oklahoma. They were just like, no, we want this land. Get the hell out of here. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people 
just in this little stable area waiting to get the orders for the them to march themselves to Oklahoma. That's, but that's what's so creepy about that. But also during the the uh, Civil War, mm-hmm. you know, I can't remember if it was Confederates or uh, the North, mm-hmm. but uh, they had essentially. I don't want to call it a concentration. I mean, essentially, I guess you could label it a concentration camp, but they had like 45,000 uh, soldiers of the other side. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just being told what to do. So it's like yeah. if it's if it's just, you know, just outside work, whatever it may be. Yeah. So we go in these little stages of humankind and, you know, I'm not just hating on America or anything because like right now even like stuff in China is fucked up with that because... They have concentration camps going on right now, and then we're sitting there apologizing out of our ass if we recognize Taiwan. Right. So stupid. Yeah. Anywho, this is not about China. This is about concentration. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so essentially, what got me hook, line, and sinker were videos showing all kinds of like what looked to be uh, no longer in use army bases. Hmm. <laughs> That somehow they had a railroad somehow tied to it. Uh, they had giant gated fences that had barbed wire pointing in. Yeah, that's always that's always interesting, right? It's pointing in. To it's pointing out. Inside. We don't to care. Out, Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, come on in all you want. <laughs> so, you know, obviously that's a fear mongering tactic from, you know, conspiracy theorists out there. A lot of them are bullshit and they're trying to get your money somehow. So, or they're trying to push an agenda. It's like, hey, you should believe what I believe. Everyone's got a hustle, baby. I fell for it. I'm guilty of it. And there was the things I saw and read too that were debunked and that that didn't happen. I agree. Yeah. So. You pick and choose wisely. I just want to explain a little further. I had printed out a little something here to kind of give you more context to some of this stuff. But the the image here, which I'll have to put on the screen because you can't see this. But it's a complete list of 800 FEMA, 800 FEMA concentration camps <laughs> in the U.S. <laughs> well, yeah, well so, they ain't hurting for business. <laughs> so something they attach to the image here is like FEMA is the executive arm of the coming police state and thus will head up all operations. The presidential executive orders already listed on the federal register also are part of the legal framework for this operations. The camps all have railroad facilities as well as roads leading to and from the detention facilities. Many also have an airport nearby. The majority of the camps can house a population of 20,000 prisoners. Currently, the largest of these facilities is just outside of Fairbanks, Alaska. The Alaskan facility is a massive mental health facility and can hold approximately 2 million people. Right there, just send a red flag because I'm pretty million. sure the entire state of Alaska yeah, right. has like maybe 800,000 people mm-hmm. population. Sounds about right. <laughs> Get everyone in there and some. But yeah, so there are a lot of executive orders that make me question the powers that FEMA have. Do you want to question that possibly in our next yeah. segment? Yeah, I will. Keep you guys guessing, <laughs> for sure. So you, you did say you you hadn't heard of the FEMA concentration. I really right? didn't. No, okay. no, no. I was. That's, I, good. That's good. I mean, I always heard of the terminology like, well, who? What's FEMA do? And I'm like, oh yeah, they're here for you know distress and 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 to take care of you know natural or sorry, not natural, but like big emergencies like yeah. floods or, or destruction. That's where I was like, oh, FEMA is here. Like the Red Cross is here mm-hmm. to help. Yeah. I want to counter that with, no, they're not. <laughs> but I can't. But that. no, they are here to help. Right? I just want to put. We'll we'll get into that yeah. in the next segment. But like, we'll go into a real uh, in detail here. There's some weird, dark stuff in the the veins of the whole female organization. You ain't kidding. But yeah, I guess we'll take. We'll tease that later for you guys. Quick commercial break. Uh, we'll give you another run of a preview of uh, our buddies Cheeky Nacho. Cheeky Nacho. Well, yeah, we'll be right back. Yep. What's up, everybody? Cheeky here from the Cheeky and Nacho podcast. I'm Nacho. Every Friday, we talk about movies, music, dicks. My dick mainly. Yeah, his dick. We, we need a whole episode dedicated to that. Yeah, it's that long. That It's a whole episode. It's probably an hour, two hours maybe of just my dick. 
<laughs> I think Ron's trying to get it on camera. <laughs> it's the, like the, the technology isn't in there yet. It's like a unicorn. It's like, it's a, just panoramic. It's like a double panoramic thing. All right, anyways, yeah, check us out. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor. Any other podcasts. Well, we can't you fucking can remember what they are because nobody uses them, right, Nacho? Exactly. And we're going to be on YouTube soon, so soon, check that out. Soon you're going to see all this sexy all the time. Maybe my cock might peek out, but that'll be for something else. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do a special porn hub like channel. We're gonna have an OnlyFans about my cock. <laughs> Only cocks. How much are you gonna charge a month? Thirty-five dollars? It's a big dick. A month? Yeah. <laughs> it's a big dick. I don't know. It's a fat cock, so. Alright, so that's fat prices for his fat cock. Check us out. Cheeky and Nacho Podcast. Cheeky out. Bye guys. And welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed the little uh, preview of the uh, <laughs> Cheeky and Nacho podcast. <laughs> I love those guys. I love their energy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of dick talk. A lot of BDE. <laughs> I hear my son. I hear your son, too. <laughs> I think he's calling me. Yeah. I Sorry, boss. He might be, we're he a little might busy. be upset that he can't come down. Yeah, here. we might hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so FEMA cams. So let's go. Let's go down the slope now. So we'll throw a hypothetical out there. So if there is the possibility, now we didn't touch on this in the last segment, but FEMA has the power to overthrow everything. The Constitution becomes nothing. Yes, that's uh, that's a very scary idea. Is that they can do that? There's it, other it, things that back that up too. That it's not just uh, FEMA stuff per se. Sure. But, like uh, Rex 84 was established and Mm -hmm. that was from back in 1987 had started my friend yeah it was around the uh, Iran Contra stuff Mm -hmm. and it uh, was the purpose to detain individuals that they thought were a national security uh, threat I'm going to insert a video right here where uh, there's an interesting congressional hearing involving Iran Contra but they bring up that's huge the uh, essentially the Rex 84 Stuff that's essentially a contingency plan for uh, the government, <laughs> and they're like, "We're we're not want to wish these. Uh, we don't want to yeah. talk about this comments right now." <laughs> I showed this to Paul earlier, so I'm just gonna snap it in right here. Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area, so may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan, in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in which he had worked. I believe that it was. I most most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. So that's a little weird. <laughs> so you have an agency that can basically check and balance everything, yes. null and void, mm-hmm. at this point. And they have a crap ton of executive orders that back all of it up. Should I read them? I was me? just going to say, if you'd like to share a few, I think it's uh, I think it's very informative that uh, our audience knows about this. Okay, so executive <laughs> order. One give your zero. top. Give your top five. I know they're all top fives. <laughs> I'll, give you the, I'll give you the top five. I'm kidding. Go ahead. No, no. So yeah, Executive Order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. Go. <laughs> You're not leaving now. <laughs> Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Oh, we're screwed. Don't they already have that? Yeah, are they already doing that now? <laughs> Big tech censorship? I mean, uh, 
Here's a big one. Executive Order 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Hope you guys like, like all your fancy toys in your cars. <laughs> so here's here's another one where it's, it's kind of a double down on... Uh, Damn, that's just... On the transportation end, but Executive Order 10998 allows the government to seize all means of transportation, including personal cars, trucks, or vehicles of any no, kind. No, you're not taking my car. Total control no. over all highways, seaports, and waterways. But wait, that goes against my constitutional right, doesn't it, Ron? <laughs> oh, wait, that doesn't matter anymore. You know, and there's another executive order, 10999, allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. Here we go. And Here we go. Here's one more I'll throw in there. Executive order 11000 <laughs> allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Hence what I think, and I hope I'm wrong. But let's just see. Let's just let's flash forward six months from now. Do you think, in the slightest bit, that they could eventually turn the camp situation there into a vaccinated and non-vaccinated? Hmm. Camp? I don't think we can say those on YouTube. But stabbies, <laughs> stabbed or non-stabbed? Vax, non-vax. Can't say that. Yeah. So if uh, if there's a little pro vaccine on here, pro vaccine. Pro anti vax, right? right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to have some kind of wiki thing underneath their YouTube page that says, here's some information on the vaccines. <laughs> yeah. I hate that they do that. So well, they're going like, door to door. Yeah, that's. If you're aware of that. Something also allotted to in this whole <laughs> FEMA conspiracy. They actually had something online that was uh, getting like a colored dots placed on your mailboxes or something like that. Not taking into any consideration that not all Americans have <laughs> mailboxes, but you know, you would get like a uh, a yellow dot, a blue dot, or a red dot. Uh, blue dots were, I think, you had to be taken into like a re-education type thing, and then into a FEMA camp type thing. I don't remember completely, but I know a yellow one was you obviously. Uh, you just go along with the government, so you'll be, you'll do what you're told. And what's red? Red is you are danger murdered on the spot. Danger, yeah, <laughs> right to the head. <laughs> you're gone. So they had all this out there, and there were there were even some politicians out there, or maybe it was like a, I think it was like a retired sheriff or something like that. I was at the Capitol talking about this stuff, and mm. you know that riled up a lot of conspiracy theorists. And I was kind of one of those. I was like, what the hell's going on here? Like, this ain't cool. But it doesn't help the case at all that there are actual executive orders for FEMA to that's, be able to just strip away any constitutional rights that's that we the have. Whole, that's the whole thing. They can detain us without warrant. They can seize property at any given point in time. And it's just like, I understand the government having contingency plans. I get that. But most of the stuff that I saw that were contingency plans were contingencies that involved civilian uprising. <laughs> so with a lot of politics and everything, they like to disguise a lot of things with uh, certain words and phrases that can mean something when you're listening to it, but for them, it means something completely different. Which is so damn confusing sometimes. And the power could, of the bullshit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's also gotten to the point where you can't even get the politicians in line because in order to get the politicians in line to keep them from doing stupid things like... For perfect example, the thing in Texas where like the Democrats just up and fleed the state <laughs> to get out of voting on a bill for voter ID, which I thought was the most ridiculous like, thing. I'm sorry, folks, but if you're <laughs> against voter ID, the reasoning behind it, a lot of it is toward African Americans. And it's racist to say that they're too dumb to get an ID. 
flat out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or just anybody. A lot of their stuff is like people in rural areas or, you know, poor people can't afford or know how to do anything else. And it's just like, that's so stupid. Yeah. Beyond. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. So they should not be allowed to do that. You can't just run away just because you're not going to get your way or you don't want to do something like that. It's just like anytime we have a budget thing and we have to shut the government down. And Why? <laughs> you know, hundreds of thousands of people won't get a paycheck. No. Social security checks won't yeah. get rolled out. But yet they can go on a little, uh, what do they call it, recess or whatever mm-hmm. for months. And they can take months. Yeah. It's like, At their own leisure. No, you work for the people. You on the courtesy of the ass, taxpayer. Yeah. Park your ass to the Capitol and get it worked out. That's how it's supposed to be. They're supposed to work for us, but that has not yeah. been the case. But what I was getting at is we don't have a way to check them. Yeah. Because there's no in order checks. To check them. Mm-hmm. They have to pass a bill of them getting checked, and that's not going to happen. Right. There's no <laughs> checks and balances for FEMA. Yeah. They run the show. That's what the most startling thing is. Yeah. Any other agency in any other country, any other situation, there is no power to override the Constitution. But who gave them the authority to do this themselves? Mm, I think it was Carter, wasn't it? President well, I mean, he's, I mean, <laughs> I want to be like, yeah, 79, my bad. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Jimmy. But that, that that's the thing. That's just is like there's a lot of a lot of taxpayers money and the, the, a lot of it has to do with the black budget which is you know a, a lot of it's all classified you don't know where right. any of that stuff goes to me i honestly think all of that should be public record for all american people i you should know where every cent goes it should be it's your own money i mean yeah every especially nowadays with the internet the way things are you should be able to look up and see what your your own town and city spending the taxpayer money on i mean there's a lot of things going on that Shouldn't be going on. It's like we pay taxes and stuff here for having recyclables. We have the cans and everything like that. And it came out like a couple of years ago that our city and county can't afford to pay for recycling. So all of it's getting thrown in the dump. <laughs> As they kept their kickbacks and they bought their cars and their houses. Yeah. And, and I bet they're still like, saying that they're still green. Of course they are. And then they just want to keep getting more and more and more because yeah. they're greedy. Yep. But it's so convoluted. It's really, it's dense. There's so many aspects to it. But the main thing we want to discuss is the fact that even though the concentration camp aspects with FEMA is debunked because all this stuff has, they've had so many professional reporters going and digging this because a conspiracy theorists made a, a big wave, big shout about it, mm-hmm. you know. So they actually had people go in and investigate it. And all this, all this stuff is just like, Places where cops will train or, you know, decommissioned army bases mm-hmm. and stuff like that. They still have a guard there to make sure nobody gets on and yeah. hurts themselves or anything like that. It's like we got that at the old Ford factory that's down the road that, you know, there's always somebody there, you know. Sticking it out. Yeah, making sure nobody's yep. trespassing. But I don't know. <laughs> it's still a scary thought because even though that's been debunked. All the things are in place for this to happen. For if they wanted to, it could. We have uprise. We have, I mean, the whole world's upside down right now. Yeah. And I mean, it's not. What's them to not initiate this? They could. And there's so many things right now going on that could enact that. That's why I keep saying, I'm like, I think that they could use that as, as a tool. Yeah. You know, you have the pandemic stuff going on. Um, Obviously, racial tensions get out of hand. They actually, part of that was put in place. I don't know if it was tied to FEMA directly, but it was tied to FEMA in some way. But like back in the 60s or 70s, Mm -hmm. they had contingencies for rounding up African-Americans if the whole black power thing got out of hand and they tried to do an uprising or something like that. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heal. Really racist shit. Uh, Excuse me. But, you know, racial tensions now, still weird. Pretty, pretty bad. But also, you also have the financial crisis that will come. I mean... Just everything going on, the ridiculous amounts of spending we're having to do, 
the but housing yet, bubble 2.0 is probably but yet coming. the corporations are making out hand over fist oh, i know it is absolutely it's insane the amount i mean we talked about the other day i mean we're, we're seeing you know obviously the dow went up even more than it's ever been mm-hmm. recently and i'm like how can that be right how Could inflation has already hit no, 1991 numbers is what I read a report on Forbes the other day. No, the inflation has gone up just in so, the two years. It's gone up so much. Right. And it's un- unreal. And you will run into that situation, unfortunately, again, when the gas prices do go up and we'll, we'll have that same thing. But again, it goes back to the power and control. Right. That's. Well, Paul, this fails. I got my RV and we can just take <laughs> <laughs> He just says the word and we're gone. <laughs> Shaboopy. <laughs> Shaboopy, yeah. So that that is just, yeah. I, I want to just say, Mal, maybe, you know, obviously we're going to talk more conspiracies down the road, but obviously this one is going to be the mother of just the fact that uh, the law of the land could just be wiped out at any point. Yeah, this will probably be referenced a lot in the coming conspiracy topics we have. Uh, also, we're going to jump into some more stuff, uh, you know, get some more music and movie stuff. Top Gun Maverick is coming out in a couple months. That's definitely going to be... <laughs> Heavily accented on this show. <laughs> we got some pretty cool, uh, we got a little Metallica diddly we're going to put together. Mm, diddly. Diddly. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Got to get working on that. All right, let's step out of this depressing topic. Yes, let's go to get some, uh, get something a little more, something a little more uprising, All uplifting. Right. How about we take ourselves to that lovely town of uh, Three Shots of Funny. Do it! <laughs> You ever just think if you got shot and you made that laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, <are> you okay? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> He's dead. You're dead. Beep boop bop. You're uh, dead. I couldn't make myself laugh like that if I tried right now for real. No, but you just you got something just has to happen. Right it has to happen. Yeah. Like it's not on a fly type thing. All right. So that's your week this week. It's my lady's yeah. choice. And all right, so she sent me this lovely ditty. It is titled uh, Pro Tip. Pro Tip, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to do my lap pull down. Uh, I don't want to hear that damn farts. It's funny <laughs> seeing her face, man. <laughs> <laughs> and she's looking right at him. Oh, dude. <laughs> she's like, dude, I'm not stupid. I see you. Too. But she kind of looks like she's impressed, though. <laughs> she's like, yeah, that had the distance. She's shocked, but impressed. <laughs> That's, I've, that's I've never, a Ron Burgundy look. She's giving it to you. He's like, don't act like you're not impressed. I mean, even the, like when I worked out years ago, I've never thought to. <laughs> oh, I totally do it. Oh, my God. It'll be for fun. All right. Mine is called yeah. When Your Wife Says No. Oh, no. What the fuck are you doing? You gotta get my girlfriend drunk. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes. For our listeners, he is over the kitchen sink pouring beer on his hand. <laughs> well, <laughs> right? All right. What do you got for us this right. week? Mine is uh, called uh, The Running Man. The Running Man. <laughs> I thought it was going to snap and whip him in the was, back. <laughs> like I, 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 I'm very like, you know, when I see people training like that, you know, it's yeah. great, you know, and then all of a sudden, you just never know when that elastic band's going to either break or make you a part of this situation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he just got floored and lost it all. Dude, I straight up Joker laughed uh, one time. My brother Brady, he was uh, stretching out with his rubber. Yeah. Uh, elastic yeah, pants or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So he got in this weird position. And he had his feet over them, 
and he was stretching it out, you know, getting real far back, <laughs> and it just slips and nails him right in the ball. Oh <laughs> no! Like, oh my god! <sighs> it's like he's one. Of, he's like a yogi guy, so he's like he can do all kinds of stuff. And that's the first time I ever saw him have a mishap. <laughs> oh was my nuts! <laughs> oh my balls! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, nothing like the nut shot. I right. know. <laughs> that was our three shots. Funny. <laughs> three shots. So yeah, I think we're gonna have to have another uh, another episode where we do like we did for our twenty fifth episode, where we had twenty five in a row. <laughs> I really had fun doing that. I th- <laughs> actually, I should say that right now. Our our fiftieth episode is is in four four more episodes after. We should do it for that. Okay. 25? All right. Yeah. Well, you have about two <laughs> to three weeks from now. <laughs> Send us your funny videos and we'll react awesome. to them on our show. We'd love to do that. Uh, you can either send it to us on a DM on Instagram at Thunder Rooster Podcast, or you can email them to us, uh, info mm-hmm. at thunderrooster.com. Com. But yeah, we love having fun with that. <laughs> I mean, we should have an episode where we just get blitzed and watch those videos. I'm down. <laughs> just do a live one. Yeah. Just watch a bunch of randoms. All right, folks. All right. I hope you enjoyed our Thanks, show. Thanks, guys. Uh, have we, a great weekend. We appreciate you. Yes. Like, like and subscribe, merch. please. Buy us some merch. <laughs> buy us some merch. You buy some merch. We buy yourself. some of the merch. Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody. Have a good weekend. Epstein Day comes up. Peace.